Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my brand new series, Self Isolation. Now, in the last one we had Ali Gordon, we spoke about his grooming routine, we spoke about his top drinks choices, what he's watching on Netflix. In this one is someone that I'm sure you guys all know. This is Jordan O'Brien. I was actually due to see Jordan in San Francisco in April, that's off, but we're still gonna connect. And Jordan's gonna talk about, do you know what? I'm not gonna tell you. You're gonna see it in this, here you go. Here's Jordan O'Brien in Self-Isolation, the series. Jordan, hi. Robin, how are you? It's been a long time. Th it has been a long time. Welcome to Self-Isolation. Uh, I appreciate it. How's it treating you so far? Uh, so far, we're okay. I, I do feel kind of the effects of being by myself, but um, yeah. How about you? So far, so good. I mean, I've been isolated. Well, I mean, locked down, I guess you could say, for... I would say going on, I would say going on two weeks now. Okay. But, um, so I think we were, uh, before the curve, essentially for England. Um, but so far it's been fun. I mean, I do this all the time anyway, so it's pretty natural for me. <laughs> this is just your usual, isn't it? This is, I've been, it. I've been practicing since I was like 12 years old, so I am good to go. Well, I, I was due to come across the to the US I had a wedding and I was going to be in San Francisco and we were going to catch up so this yeah. is what we're going to do instead so we're we're still filming together we're still getting a bit of a virtual catch up yeah we should do this more often because you know when people are across the country it's kind of this is really the only way to do things so exactly well are you ready for the self isolation 6 i'm i'm ready i'm ready hit me with your best shot okay so um obviously you're at home at the moment but if there was one place in the world, and that can be a hotel, it can be your home, someone else's home, a fantasy land, where would you want to self-isolate? Well, if I had like the perfect situation, it would be somewhere where like, it would be very beautiful and like there would be so many different like landscapes and environments that I could work in. But since it's not like that, um, at home is perfectly fine. I have all the stuff that I need. I have, uh, um, it, and it allows me to kind of focus on like myself as well. So I can work on my car. I could, I'm a gardener now. I'm Farmer Jordan now. So like, I'm, you know, I'm a whole new man because of this. So I would say here is the best place for me right now. I could do everything I need to do and also uh, kind of grow more as a person. So you're living the American dream. Is it like white picket fence and sort of homestead vibes with you? <laughs> no, it's more so like uh, prairie vibes. Nice. I'm liking that look. Also, you are kind of channeling that with this sort of flat cap. Yeah, I love this. I mean, and I love the Peaky Blinders too. So, uh, I mean, I kind of, I it's kind of like obligatory, if that's the right word. I mean, it is, and you're, 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 you're pulling it off. And um, like, you're obviously a guy who looks after himself. You're very well groomed. We've seen on your YouTube channel. We see on your Instagram. In self-isolation, do you still like have a morning routine? Do you really look after your skin, your hair? Are you getting dressed in a certain way? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if everybody knows, I cut off all my hair, so there's not much of a... Shock horror, uh, I'm gonna unsubscribe now. I know, there's not, not much of a routine for the hair anymore besides just putting a little bit of some uh, like matte paste in it and giving it some texture. But in terms of grooming, I have some stuff. Go and get it. While Jordan's getting his stuff, if you want to see anyone else on this self-isolation series, then comment down below and we'll get some more guys on here or maybe some other sort of women. Jordan, sorry, show us your way. Yeah, grab it. Okay, so I have been using um, this brand called Geology. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, I did, uh, it's obviously in the past, I, I worked with them as well, but now like I genuinely like them. So what you do is you basically put in your... Um, like your skin type into like a survey and then they'll like concoct like a, a, a like a four step thing for you to make it pretty easy. So like a, like a, a face wash, a morning cream and a night cream and an, and an eye cream. So uh, that's what I've been using. It works great. And I've also been using, I don't like, I went to New York and this uh, brand gave me a toner. I don't know what it is. I don't know, really know what it's used for. Apparently, women use it before like putting on their makeup and stuff like that well any, um, anyone can use it it's a toners to kind of read well, yeah yeah it's skin. for anybody but this shop was definitely geared 
as the women market. But it's actually pretty cool. Okay. And it smells great, by the way. <laughs> what brand? It's like a uh, fresh. Oh, fresh! Yeah, I love fresh. They do a really good and good black tea mask. It's so good. Yeah, I have. I mean, Robin, let me tell you, I have a ton of products. They sent me home loaded. But uh, this thing right here is really cool. It's like a, it's like a facial toner, rose floral petal kind of thing. I didn't know what it was, but you can, I could, it like gets rid of the redness. So like all of like, you know, like if your face has different like colorations and yeah. stuff like that, it like really gets rid of it. And then you can put on your, your moisturizer and then your skin just mm -hmm. is like shining. It's really cool. Actually, I, I, I would have, now I can see why, uh, people enjoy like uh, face care so much because there's yeah. so many different things that could, could work for you. And kind of being able to tweak it depending on how it feels and if it feels tight or it feels oily or it just feels like you need a quick boost, then kind of having mm -hmm. these products can, I suppose, work to, to what you need. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I'm, really, I'm really enjoying it. So that's, that's my uh, face routine. In terms of clothing, I mean, I can't really go anywhere, but I, I can dress up for some videos, but that's yeah. about it. <laughs> Are you in pajama bottoms? I'm pretty sure I saw that you were. Oh man, I was trying to stand up so you wouldn't see it, but yeah, I am. I just woke up. It's like four o'clock for you over there. It's yeah, only nine for me over here. I woke up at, at like eight, but I just had to throw them on. I probably should put jeans on, but you know, I'm not judging. Like, quarantine. I'm not like. judging. Give us a quick like. Show us what you're wearing. Come on. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> So I got, you know, just the normal flannel pajama bottoms here, you know, nice and comfy. I got the Nike Cortezes on because I had to go take the garbage out. And then just a, uh, I know Robin likes his blues. So I got my the blue, uh, blue normal sweatshirt and a flat cap. That's about it. Nice. Very country casual. Very much just <laughs> like self-quarantine chic. Yeah, exactly. So straight out of bed, quarantine sheet. Now, you've got this sort of the, the English gent flat cap, but do you have this sort of English gent taste in drinks? If you could, like, have one drink to self-isolate with or to stockpile, what would it be? Well, not much of a drinker, but when I do drink, I like to drink uh, whiskey. So That's it's definitely more of that uh irish flair you know me being irish um or scottish hello whiskey or scottish yeah both yeah. of you both of you guys up there um but it's a whiskey sour i like whiskey sours i enjoy but like a traditional one it needs to have the egg whites on top it can't just be like sour and whiskey it needs to have the egg whites mixed in a little cherry on top um i like really tart things so that just kind of goes pretty easily together for me. I don't, I like, yeah, that's about it. So I guess that's kind of like gentleman -y. Yeah. Do you make your I own? I can. I used to be a bartender, so I can definitely make a mean uh, whiskey sour for sure. What should people be trying then at home? Because a lot of people will have a bit of time. Maybe in the evening they want to try any different drinks. If you were, if I'm coming up to your bar right now, I'm going to say, um hi yeah i'm looking to try maybe something different what, what would you recommend okay if you okay so when i worked at the bar i saw we had this little black handbook and it was like the secret handbook of like like uh old recipes and stuff like that and there was one on there that for some reason i just really it like caught my eye when i was flipping through all the pages it's called the cuban peach and um it's, it's a very sweet drink but if you've ever had those like um little peach ring candies there's like the apple rings, peach rings, and stuff like that. It tastes just like that. So if you're like in like a party mood or like you want to bring your spirits up or something like that, you want like a nice sweet drink, the Cuban peach is mm, so What's good. What's in it? How do we make it? It is um, peach schnapps. Uh, it's got rum as like the main alcohol. And then, um, so it has like kind of like that Caribbean flair. And then um, just it's really it's a really sweet drink so it's like that and then like i think like uh i haven't made it in so long but there's a there's one more ingredient it might be like uh like a, a little hit of like a sprite like fizzy soda to give it like a fizzy flair to it but it's really good it, it's not like a big drink it's not like you know in those big glasses it's like in a nice little 
like a uh, Manhattan glass or something like that. So yeah, it's really nice. good. It's really good. Or a Bloody Mary. Those are good too. Yeah. Oh God. I love all of those. I mean, at the moment, this is very much like a bit of a coffee sort of self-isolation sort of podcast, video cast, yeah. whatever. So uh, yeah, I've been mainlining a lot of coffee. Um, well, I we also it, saw, we saw you got some, uh, some wine over there. Right? Yeah. You had you ordered like a, what was it, like a five pack or something like that? Um, yeah, I mean, it was less of a five pack, more of like um, a gorgeous vintage five. No, um, there was an app actually called Wine App, which I found. And yeah. I got 15 pounds off my first order, which you can do too via the okay. link description. So smooth. Um, but yeah, a guy arrived on a scooter with five bottles of gorgeous okay. reds. And yeah. Perfect. I mean, at, at, at this time of crisis, I mean... Uh... That kind of self delivery is pretty good. Yeah, make do and mend. That's what I'm about yeah. at the moment. Any little tweaks and changes we can make with like our grooming routine, like you're doing with your skin or with wine, is very much what I'm about at the moment. Absolutely. So when you're like sitting of an evening or you're looking to kind of like disconnect from things at the moment, um, which I, I'm sure a lot of us are trying to do, is there something you're like binge watching or reading? Yeah, I, I, okay. I, so there's a, it's called Designated Survivor. It's on Netflix. Um, it's basically like everybody dies in the White House and there's one dude left and he's like, you know, the new president and has to rebuild the government. Um, so the first season was 22 episodes and I watched it in a day and a half. So uh, yeah, I'm, def I'm trying to slow down though. I'm on season two. I'm slowing down because I mean, it's just gonna, I'm just gonna blow right through it. I'm trying to give myself a little bit of time to work with. And then my favorite show, Ozark, I don't know if you, I, I'm assuming, I don't know if all shows are released throughout the world on Netflix or if it's country by country. Um, but Ozark, I don't know if you've watched it, is um, another one coming out in two days. So that will be amazing. Uh, that's like, it's like on par with Peaky Blinders for me. It's like, this is great. And then when this isn't showing, you know, this one shows and it's like, I can't, just can't stop watching it. So those two, I haven't done much reading. I'll be honest. I read some stuff on the internet, but I don't read like an actual book, unfortunately. <laughs> but you're, you're doing all this work on your car at the moment. Are you using like any yeah. sort of like car manuals or anything in order to sort of, no? No, no, it's all just, kind of, well, my dad has worked on cars since he was like 12. So, and that's his, that's his profession right now as well. So he knows pretty much everything that you need to do. And to be honest, a lot of the stuff working on a car isn't really as hard as it seems. There's a lot of things in there that you like, say, if you want to work on like the engine, obviously you'll need to know, like, it's like a, it's like a blueprint, but like, if you're just doing like for us right now, we're just working on making it look pretty which is like, you know, taking out dents and all that kind of stuff. It's all pretty simple. It's just kind of like tinkering and, you know, making the dent go back to normal. Like it look like there is no dent. Um, uh, a lot of people could do it if they had the right tools. That's the only thing you really need is the right tools. So luckily my dad has all that stuff, but we're not really following a blueprint for it. We kind of just go with uh, how I guess he's done it for his whole life. So it's pretty fun. And we're, we're on the painting stage now. So we're nearing the home stretch finally it's been like six years yeah it's been a long time but i'm, sh I'm sure it'll be worth it what what kind of car is it it's a volkswagen it's a volkswagen fastback so it's not like your traditional little bug that you, everybody knows about it's like a, a a fast i don't know how to explain it it's like a it's longer <laughs> it's longer and it doesn't look like a little beetle but it's fun and and they're more so like uh eye-catching you know people are like well what's that it's a Volkswagen but I've never seen that before um compared to like oh it's a bug mm -hmm. so that's why I like it I just really love classic stuff and it goes with how I was brought up I, I listened to classic music when I was a kid you know 60s music the Beatles all the classic rock um so I kind of just kind of delved into that whole world when it comes to clothing the vintage stuff cars all that good stuff and you're someone I think that sort of understands themselves and sort of your purpose and sort of learning new skills. But do you think in this period of self-isolation, do you think it might teach you something about yourself? 
Absolutely. Yes. So, um, there's a lot of things, you know, it's I'm pretty, I got a pretty good poker face, Robin. You know, I, it makes, it looks like I, I know everything about my life, but in reality, I really, I really do. I think everybody is always changing and finding different things about themselves or learning different things about themselves. But during this self-isolation, yeah, I mean, like, for the longest time when I went to school, I majored, I have, I have my degree in geography with a focus in uh, agriculture and cultural geography and like uh, environmental sustainability. So now that I'm living on this I land, if you will, um, I have time to garden. I have time to plant food and crops, which is something that I always wanted to do. Um, but when I was living with my parents, there was just no room for it. I didn't you know, there's no, there's, it's, you know, tiny little homes in an, in an area, but now I have um, a little bit more property and I could have the flexibility to plant corn. We planted corn last year, strawberries. By we, I say me and my sister, we live here together. Um, roommates with your sibling is kind of strange, but, uh, and now we're doing like pear trees. We're trying to, we're trying to like really do a lot of things to do self growth. And I would have been doing this regardless of the, the quarantine as well. It's, I think it's really important for people to uh, kind of reflect on themselves, especially, especially more so during times of crisis like this too, to kind of really put in perspective what's important to them. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. So work and self, self growth and self reflection. Yeah. It sounds like you've kind of got it sorted there. I am getting quite excited at the moment because I have a mini radish that's growing on my windowsill of my tiny one bed flat. And you're growing corn and pears and strawberries. Is is your like plot of land huge? It's about an acre, half an acre ish. Um, it's a bittersweet story because it's my grandparents' house, and you know, like, this was the childhood home that uh, my dad grew up in, and that. You know, I came here for my birthdays and all this stuff. Um, when they unfortunately passed away, they left the house to my dad. So instead of my dad selling it or doing whatever he wanted to do, he, uh, me and my sister convinced him to uh, let us stay in it so we could keep it in the family. So, I mean, obviously we were paying rent and everything still, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty decent size of, of stuff. And I think my grandparents would um, appreciate us taking care of it and being here so did they have like any sort of vegetables and fruit and stuff or oh yeah that's that's why all this is the way it is it's because they they grew um you know green beans that would go up you know 10 feet into the air with like a little atrium thing i don't even know what it is they, they lettuce potatoes corn uh they were big on my grandma would make her own raspberry jam they had raspberry bushes out here galore um, I remember coming out here and just picking the raspberries when I was a little kid. Ugh, it was so fun. But I want to get it back to that. I, I want to have this area kind of be like its own ecosystem, like bees and, uh, you know, pollination, stuff like that, hummingbirds. There's, you know, stuff running around out here. I want it to be like its own little world. So I love that. I mean, if, if I was you, then I wouldn't be wanting to leave that in self-isolation either. That sounds like... Right? Yeah. Sounds like a fantasy land of just like all the good stuff. Bees Go out there and tend to the crops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's a nice little place. I'm that's why I, I wouldn't want to leave, and that's why I usually I don't leave anyways. Even when, <laughs> yeah. even when I have the choice, I usually just stay home. <laughs> I think at times like this too, where you're kind of forced to be in one place, it does make you sort of reevaluate where you are and choices. I mean, I know certainly that I love my flat and I it's great to live by myself, but in times where you're not seeing anyone else and you don't have any outdoor yeah. space that it's a little bit like, okay, right. Is this me? Is this what I need? Is this kind of like, does it fulfill me? Yeah. Like what can, what can I do to, you know, make myself either distracted or take time to do stuff that I've always wanted to do, but never had time, that kind of stuff. So uh, uh, while it's a complete tragedy, what's going on in the world, I think if people could um, kind of reflect on themselves and kind of learn things about themselves, it could kind of lighten the load a little bit, at least. Yeah. Know? I mean, that actually is the perfect link to the final of the self-isolation sit. Um, 
And that is about sort of if you could give someone a top tip to remain positive in this sort of period of self-isolation, you know, what would it be? Well, I would say it's tough because everybody is different. Everybody reacts to these kinds of things in their own way. So, I mean, if, and, and people shouldn't feel judged by how they react to these things or what they do. I mean, obviously be safe and like self-isolate and stuff like that. Like don't put yourself in harm's way or other people in harm's way. But like in terms of just kind of trying to have like a positive mindset. I know some people might be directly affected by this. It might be family members or people they know. Um, but, you know, for me and my kind of situation with it, I don't have anybody directly affected by it yet. You know, knock on wood. Um, so what I just try and do is really like how we've been talking about this whole thing, really just focusing on what I can do to either make myself better kind of make the climate not as um you know detrimental as it as it really as it is for the whole world it's terrible um and really just trying to be like the best person i could be to try and help others or just help myself and take my mind off of things really that's the best thing you could do is just try and be i think try and be as normal as you possibly can in a time of not normal times <laughs> it's a it's like a hard juxtaposition but that's just how i think about it um have everybody in their in their hearts and stuff like that but really just trying to be be my be, be my own really this this time is for a lot of people for everyone really feels quite uncertain and it's yeah. uh, and it's like uh and i said this on one of the podcasts that i did um with a girl called re really re um mm -hmm. not heard that then i'll link it uh in this sort of time there's there's not a roadmap and people don't have experience of this, so you can't really look back on those things. So it's all kind of like, just kind of feeling your way through it, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's really, it, it, there's no, we've never had a time like this. I mean, I mean I've only been, only been alive for 28 years. I've never had a time like this. I don't know if there's ever been a pandemic like this on such a global scale for everybody. I know there's been Ebola and you know, H1N1 and that kind of stuff like that, but I don't remember it ever being like this. I've never had to, you know, I've never seen countries go on lockdown or anything like that. So um, it's really about just, yeah, trial and error and learning, like learning, kind of got to learn on the go, really. It's, yeah. it's the, that's that, I think that's what the, the most uncertain thing about it is, is people are just like, they don't know what's going to happen next kind yeah. of thing. And that's what scares a lot of people. But we'll get there. Oh yeah, we will. I, it'll, who knows how long, but it'll, it'll pass eventually. Uh, we need okay. to definitely take it more seriously as a, as a world. So once we start doing that, I think it'll hopefully start to get better. And what I think is, you know, doing something like this and having a discussion and chatting to someone on the other side ish of the world across the pond is, um, you know, my purpose and value, I think, in this is for discussions and for conversations and to hopefully find a way to let people disconnect from some of the stuff which feels a little too tough or too hard so we can exactly. we can talk about making crops and pear trees and yeah. all the good stuff yeah absolutely yeah some hopefully some of the things you know when you read your comments hopefully there are things that are like you know i i needed this to yeah. get away like that as long as i think we both can agree on this as long as we can give some type of escape yeah absolutely I think that's our job well done. Well, thank you very much. You have been a star of stars, as I expected you would have been. Oh, no, it's only because you were giving me the good questions. That's the only, only reason why. Well, well, you've helped me out, and uh, no, you've been absolutely great. What I'll do is, Jordan, I'll put all your details down below. So people, okay. go and check out Jordan. Go and check out his channel. Go and say hi to him on Instagram. Say you've you've watched this or you've listened to this if you're on the podcast there um, and show him some love. But um, thank you. And I'll talk Absolutely. to you again. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye. So there you go, Jordan O'Brien. Jordan has literally, as I said there, the smoothest, calmest voice. So I'm, I'm hoping you're feeling really zen after that. Um, I should say there's going to be more people coming up. Make sure you get your suggestions in. Comment down below if someone's already said something you like then give it a thumb up. Also, if you're new to this, 
make sure you press subscribe right now. There'll be more links to up there, my Instagram, the stuff from the blog and the newsletter on screen here. But until my next new video, bye-bye.